Alright, so I want to talk about uh, the deformation obstruction uh, theory of group extensions. So to save you time, let me just say uh, the two main statements. that are quite, and this is kind of a pretty, this is written up in a lot of places, which is, it's done really well in a lot of places. So the two main statements are the following. One, uh, so H2 uh, of group cohomology G of A classifies uh, extensions of G by A up to equivalence okay and, uh, and then two is if, if we have an extension uh, who's associated uh, H2 class vanishes Uh, then uh, the the uh, the splittings of the sequence uh, form uh, a torsor under this group H one A H one G A. Okay, and so let me also say this. So uh, for this for this statement in the current form or in the framework that I know it, uh, A needs to be an abelian group. Um, also, what I also want to say is that um, uh, uh, before before going into this is that uh, uh, that well, what else did I want to say? I wanted to say that. Um, Uh, what the hell did I want to say? Oh, 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 I wanted to say that this fits into a framework uh, that's that's very general. So, uh, so like the, there's a little remark is that uh, a general framework or deformation. Well, okay, actually, uh, let's say this this should fit into. I actually don't know how this works uh, into a general framework. Uh, for the deformation obstruction theory of gerbs. Okay, uh, maybe someone can explain to me actually how this works. So how, uh, yeah, if someone here is happened to click on this video and you know way more about this and you manage to not click, uh, or not get this far, or, or not uh, close it out, uh, so I know some of you topology people watch these things. Uh, I'm watching you. Anyway, uh, if you know one of you guys, I know maybe Adam or something. I don't know. Someone's watching this. If you know uh, how this works, David perhaps or Eric. Uh, yeah. Okay. If you know how the the gerb uh, situation works with this, maybe you can post it in the comments for people. Uh, this is mainly for people who haven't seen this before. Um, all right. Okay, so um, since I don't feel like recording and, and going over this whole classification again, I'm just going to leave a reference in the bottom for the, the statement about H2. I did do some things about, uh, prove some things about the H1, which I'm now going to like uh, cut into this video. So um, yeah, so this is the, 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 all I wanted to say about this. Uh, hopefully this is helpful to some people. Um, so this, is, this video is going to be about uh, splittings of exact sequences of groups and their torsor structure. And so this is a, a, a just a general thing that uh, I want to use. So first I want to talk about this action. So, uh, so here's what we'll set up. So given 
uh, an exact sequence. So we'll have an exact sequence of groups. I'm going to write it multiplicatively. E, here's the extension, G1. So this is an extension of G by A. Uh, we can look at a splitting here. So given a splitting of this extension, Uh, like this. So this is a group homomorphism here. Um, so we, we get to define an action. can define an action of G on A. Um, Alright. So, uh, and so how do we define this? So this is, uh, we'll do this, this is, this is going to be G times f of a. So this is going to be defined to be equal to uh, so f g a f g inverse. Okay, and uh, so let me say a lemma is that if a is abelian uh, this action is independent of the choice of splitting. And we've seen in other videos that uh, this act, you can actually construct this action without even having a splitting. So, um, okay, so let, let me let me just uh, prove this real quick. So, uh, proof. So the proof. Oh, so, so let F1 and F2 from uh, let's say G to E be two splittings. Okay, then for all G and G, uh, what do we have? So we have that uh, F1 of G, F2 of G inverse, this is in the kernel, okay, of, uh, of the, the, the projection back down. Okay, so the kernel is here, so when you project back down, they both land to the same thing. They both land to G, so there, so they're in A. Okay, so this implies that, uh, that, well, that F1 G inverse of F2 of G. So if we conjugate an element A uh, by an element of A, since it's abelian, uh, this is just going to be equal to A. All right? And now we just uh, write this out again. So this tells us that F2 of G A of 2 G inverse, this is equal to uh, F1 G A F1 of G of uh, F1 of G inverse. Okay? So this is what we wanted to show. So that, that uh, the two actions are exactly the same. Okay, so uh, given this, Uh, we define uh, this, uh, so g to, to the a to be equal to uh, f g a f g inverse for some choice of splitting. Okay. All right, so now we have this well-defined action, and it's, it's well-defined and it's independent of this splitting. Okay, so, um, so what do I want to say now? So the lemma that I want to prove is that, um, uh, so given, uh, let's say, uh, so the splittings, uh, so splittings, of the sequence uh, to one uh, modulo equivalence. Okay, so these are a torsor uh, under uh, H one. Uh, uh, G A, where the action of G on A of 
have g on a is as above. Okay, so this is what I want to prove. So that, that I want to show that all the splittings are actually a torsor under uh, group cohomology. This group cohomology is given with respect to the left action that I just described, which is independent of the splitting. So, and here uh, A is abelian. Okay, um, and I also need to define what it means for for two uh, two extensions to be equivalent. So, so what is this equivalence? Okay, so um, so the the one thing you could say is that uh, well, I have to define how to construct a cocycle given two splittings. So you could define it after defining the cocycle via the co-boundary condition given this lemma. But uh, what I'll say what what it'll amount to is uh, two splittings being equivalent if they're a conjugate. Okay, so uh, so the definition says that uh, so f one so given given a sequence E G 1 and then we'll have two splittings Fi for I is equal to 1 and 2 and A is abelian we'll say that F1 is similar to F2 if and only if uh, F1 is uh, A conjugate Uh, to uh, F2, okay, and what does this mean? So by by definition, uh, this says that for there exists some A and A, such that for all G and G, uh, F1 of G is equal to, well, A, uh, F2 of G, A inverse, okay? So that they're globally conjugate, okay? So this is what this is what the definition of equivalence is. So we take these splittings and we mod up by this relation. So we look at splittings up to this conjugation, and uh, these will be the same thing as uh, uh, this. These will be in bijection with uh, group cohomology. Okay, so so let's do the proof. Okay, so so given two splittings, we need to construct a cocycle. Uh, F1 and F2, uh, G to A. So define uh, C, which is uh, C, let's say C of G, which is uh, C, and it depends on F1 and F2 of G. And so this will be F1, G, F2, G inverse. Okay? So this is an element of A. Okay, and um, so we, we define this, and the claim is that this is a cycle. This is a cocycle. We claim uh, this is a group cocycle. A cocycle with respect to that left action. Okay, so uh, let's just do that. So, what do we need to do to show that it's a group cocycle? So, we will just prove that. Uh, so, we'll, we'll look at what this is. So, so uh, C. G1, and then we'll write down uh, G1, C, G2. So this is the cocycle condition, and we want this to be equal to C of G1 times G2. Okay, and so this guy here, this G1 is acting on, on, the, on the left here. Okay, so it's not acting on the right. Okay, so this is equal to, we'll just write it out, F1, G1, uh, F2, uh, G1 inverse. Okay, so that's this, this C1. Okay, times. Uh, now we will have the, the other one. So F1, uh, G2, F2, G2, inverse. And now we're going to conjugate, and we get to choose by what we're going to conjugate by. And so it'll be convenient to conjugate by F2, G1, F2, G1 here. Okay, and so this is the, the action here. Okay, now what happens is that these go away, these cancel. And uh, now that now we use that, uh, so this is an inverse over here. Now we use that this is a group homomorphism. So this is uh, F of G1. Uh, uh, G1, sorry, F of G1 times G2. And 
F1. And then this one here, they flip. Okay, so this is uh, F2 of uh, G1 times G2. So let's say, let's do F2 of G1, F2 of G2 inverse. Okay, so this is an inverse up here. Okay, and so this is equal to, well, F1, G1, G2. And this is, uh, this is a group homomorphism, so this is F2 of G1, G2 inverse, which is C of G1, G2. Okay, so this is, okay, so, so this proves, okay, this, this shows that C is a group co-cycle with respect to that conjugation action. Okay, uh, it remains to check, uh, so it just remains to check to uh, check that, um, let's say, F1 is similar to F2 if and only if C of F1, F2 is a co-boundary. Okay, and let's recall what this means. So, um, so they're a co-boundary. So recall that uh, uh, C of F1, F2 uh, uh, a co-boundary. If and only if there exists some A such that for all G, uh, we have that this is e looks like um, uh, A times G of A inverse. Okay, so that's what we need to show. Um, I wrote this down. Okay, so uh, that's what this statement is. So this is a co-boundary if and only if this holds. Okay, and so we just write this out. So we write this out. Okay, so F1G, F2 of G is equal to, well, this is A of, uh, okay, and now we get a pick what what action we have here. So this is uh, F2 of G, uh, A inverse, uh, F2 of G inverse. Okay, and so, um, oh, this is an inverse here. Okay, and so now this implies that uh, F1 of G is equal to, well, this is equivalent to, uh, A, F2, G, A inverse. Okay, so, uh, and this is, uh, this is what it meant to be equivalence. And this was the definition of equivalence. Was the definition of equivalence. Okay, that's all I wanted to say. Um, so we've, we've proved, again, let me just repeat that. We've proved that here that the splittings of this are really a torsor under this, this cohomology.